views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice speak up and become leaders of their own life everyone has their gifts to share with the world and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice which is within all people men and women topics include personal growth spirituality creativity leadership and divine feminine now here's your host chris stanis well, welcome to Voices of Women. I hope everybody's having a great start of the weekend on Friday. Um, today, we're going to talk about how women can have good experiences in dating and finding a great partner. My guest is Dr. Susan Edelman, author of Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, A New Sexual Revolution for Women. Dr. Susan Edelman is an adjunct clinical associate professor at Stanford University in the Department of Psychology and Behavioral Sciences and is a board certified psychiatrist in private practice and she specializes in women's issues. She's had 29 years of listening to the deepest secrets of people, which has allowed her to unlock the mystery of why women don't get what they want from men. And dating doesn't have to be filled with anger and disappointment, according to Susan. And she says it's time to change the game. And that's what she's doing with her new book, the Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. So Dr. Susan shows women how to reclaim their power by learning what works best for them instead of what they're programmed to believe is normal by today's culture. And her book is called The Dating Bible by the bestsellers world.com and has won many awards, including the grand prize of the Beverly Hills International Book Awards. You can check out her website at beyourownbrandofsexy.com. So welcome, Susan. Thank you, Chris. It's wonderful to be with you today. Yeah, well, I'm sure you have many stories to share, so we're going to dive right in. First, I want you to tell your story, you know, how you came into what's your passion to be working with women, to, you know, all uh, how this dating and sexuality issues came up for you as a very, you know, it's a very passionate aspect of your work. Well, I would love to. You know, I've been a psychiatrist for a long time, and I've been interested in women's issues from the beginning, but... I did get interested um, and started writing my book based on this young woman who I'm going to call Emma to protect her privacy. She's the daughter of one of my dearest childhood friends, and she had recently started college and called me for advice about dating. And she said, Susan, the guys are asking me to come over and hang out. What does that mean? Well, I wasn't exactly sure, even though I was the savvy, single, older woman, but I figured it really wasn't exactly an invitation, a dinner, and movie. You know, did they want to be friends? Were they interested in her romantically? Or was this just another term for hooking up? So Emma wasn't interested in casual sex, and as she soon found out, a lot of these guys where she went to college really were interested in casual sex, and that's what it meant. And there weren't many guys there who just wanted to take a girl out to dinner and get to know her. And she was very disappointed. And I, it kind of broke my heart because I, I really loved college dating. I thought it was so much fun. And I started to wonder what had happened to courtship and romance. Had dating become passe? And, you know, this wasn't just Emma that this was happening to. It, it had to be happening to a lot of women, and I thought, this is not what we had in mind with the women's movement and the sexual revolution. We thought women were going to be treated better when men were, when women were seen as equal to men, right? Not that a lot of guys would simply take casual sex for granted. So not only was I sad for her, 
But I started to feel guilty because I felt like, oh, my goodness, it was my generation and, of course, the one before me who had inadvertently created this situation. She was uncomfortable with modern dating. and I've heard so many people in my practice who really let themselves be taken for granted and probably because of a lot of cultural changes. So when she said to me, Susan, you have to do something about this, I realized that my experience as a psychiatrist would really help me figure out how we got here and what we could do about it, and that's when it all started. Oh, yeah, that's great. So uh, that's a perfect, what you said is perfect. So we would talk about how did we get here? I mean, you know, it's, we, we, and, and how's it different than, you know, we went through the, sec, what they so-called the sexual revolution, the feminist era in the 70s. Um, so how did that contribute to, and it sounds like, and what you're talking about, that a lot of unhealthy things have, have happened. Well, you know, in some ways, these things were healthy, but I think they've gotten out of control because the sexual revolution promised more choices for women. But today, women are confused as ever because we went from, if you have sex before marriage, you're a tramp, to if you're a virgin, you're a prude. We have really forgotten the meaning of liberation the freedom to choose for yourself. So that's why I think we need a new sexual revolution that encourages each woman to decide what's right for her, regardless of cultural expectations. And so that's what I call being your own brand of sexy. Because really we're getting all these images of what it means to be sexy and sexual. And because sex sells, it's everywhere. And of course we want to be normal, so we ask ourselves, you know, how much sex is normal? If I have it less than four times a week, is there something wrong with me? What's wrong with me if I can't find a boyfriend? Do I need to lose weight or get breast implants? So all this sex in our culture just exerts all this pressure on us to look and act sexy or sexual, so we get confused about our sexuality and is our value based on our sexuality. Yeah. So, and I, um, I, I want to go, cause one of the things that you talk about is women struggling with having a voice is one of your first statements in your book and standing up for themselves. And this contributes to this, um, being able to create your own brand of sexy is, you know, we're still struggling, even though we've, you know, we've had this, um, you know, the feminist error and the women in power and more and more women in power, and yet we still struggle with valuing our own voices. It's so true, and I think that some women have taken what they think feminism is and turned it into a rule for them instead of really trying to figure out what's right for them as an individual. And, for example, you, you know, some women aren't comfortable with men opening their door or paying for dinner or, you know, these sorts of things. They feel like, well, I'm a strong and independent woman. I should be able to do these things myself. And I, I, I don't know that we need rules about, you know, when it's not okay for someone to be nice to you. So I think some of this we've carried a little far because it's a good thing when someone's nice to you, and especially a man, you, you want him to treat you well. That's really going to help you figure out if he's a good person to be in a relationship with. So I, I think we need to pull back a little and figure out what all our options are, and rather than see these things as, as rules, more you know, listen to our own instincts and see mm -hmm. all our options. Well, um, let's get into what are the what are the common issues that women face now in dating? So I think I think the common issues probably depend on you know your personality and and you know your environment. But I think um, the ones that I'm most concerned about is is related to what you were talking about about women feeling like they don't have the voice they want, that they don't get what they want from men. And one of the things that I hear a lot is women make excuses for men. So a lot of women just don't 
settle for what they settle for less than what they want. So, for example, maybe a man will show up late for dates, and the woman, rather than telling him she's not comfortable with that, will just think, "Oh, traffic must have been bad," or maybe he won't make a commitment, and rather than really make this an issue, she might say, oh, I should really cut him some slack because he had a bad breakup with his ex. And I think women do that sometimes when they're not really okay with how they feel or, you know, sometimes we're kind of people pleasers. We're afraid to confront people or we think we, you know, we ought to be nice to our friends kind of thing and try and be understanding. But I don't think it works in a woman's favor many times. Mm, yeah, well, that's interesting. I mean, and we're faced with, even that you're talking about, I mean, I've been married for more than 30 years and, and I still kind of go, that whole thing of opening the door for yourself, you know, and, and even just 30, 30 years ago, it's like, now I'm going to open my own door. And, and that awkwardness of, or should I let him open the door? Does he want, you know, and you, and you, and you hate making that pause because you don't want to make an assumption like, okay, he's going to open the doors. So you just go ahead and do it. And then, you know, it brings up all those stupid questions in your mind. Yeah, it does. And, and, and it doesn't, it's not that important in the grand scheme of things. Oh, no, no. And, but I think especially in dating situations, it really is a way to let the man take care of you, to see if he even thinks about taking care of you, and whether he's trying to make a good impression, because that that those are little signals that you get on a first or second date about how how much he cares and how much he's thinking of trying to impress you with how nice he is. And so I think little things kind of mean a lot at the beginning of a relationship. And for some of us, you know, I was raised in the South, so those kind of things feel gentlemanly to me. Those feel like a very familiar, nice thing. So I don't take it as an insult to my mm-hmm. independence mm-hmm. or anything. So I like it. So something okay. like that, yeah, right, some people might for me. Not. But, you know, we have to take a break now. So um, stay tuned. We're going to come back and talk more with Dr. Susan Edelman and find out more about what are the do's and don'ts that women face. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day, we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. When your body is awakened, your spirit comes alive. Dana Canetto is a transformational guide, embodiment coach, and spiritual mentor assisting women in realigning with their truth and embodying who they are by connecting to the wisdom of their body. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio and the Dr. Pat Show Network for Body Divinity Radio with Dana Canetto. For more information on Dana and her services, visit danacanetto.com. That's D-A-N-A-C-A-N-N-E-T-O.com. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. 
Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life. Your life. Intuitive and host of the radio show, Get Into It, Lynn Brown, was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and today I'm talking with Dr. Susan Edelman. We're talking about her book, Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. So, Susan, let's get into this. You know, what are the do's and don'ts that women face? And and um, some other ones when we talk about opening the door, but I'm sure there's other ones that are more complex and that make it, you know, confusing and difficult in this whole dating era. <laughs> Well, I think that I think the most important thing is kind of my first guideline about being your own brand of sexy, and that's realizing that you have options. Because I think sometimes women don't see the options that they see, so you you want to be able to to see them, and I think sometimes you also want to be able to think about your feelings and and let your your feelings guide you to some extent. And I think that's a big part of what's missing for people with dating these days because with all this pressure to be sexy and sexual, you think you've got to be the best sex object that you can be to get what you want. And what really happens when you're doing that is you're trying to meet an external standard and you're really not even listening to yourself anymore. So you're not guided by what's right for you as a person. And that's like driving in a car with your GPS all broken. You really can't get to where you want. You're going to get lost. So it's really important to listen to yourself and, and, and see if you're uncomfortable with a situation rather than just go with what the party, you think the party line is. Mm-hmm. And that leads to um, feeling comfortable or having trouble with saying no. Um, and, you know, and that's, and that plays into the, you know, the whole sexuality of things of that expectations of, you know, when do you have sex and a first date, third date, six date, whatever. But, but like you were talking about listening to yourself and, and how, how do you help women be comfortable with learning how to say no? It's a huge problem. And that's why I encourage women to listen to how they feel because it's harder if you don't know what feelings are in your way. Some people are afraid to say no. They're, they're literally scared. They're afraid the man isn't going to like them. They're going to get rejected or they're going to hurt his feelings or there will be some sort of misunderstanding. So, so it's important to be aware of that and also to realize, especially when you're dating, if a guy's going to get mad at you and, and never ask you out again just because you said, you know, I'm not comfortable having sex yet, you're a great guy, you're really attractive, but I'm just not comfortable having sex yet. If that's going to end things after a few dates, then maybe that's all he was looking for was really a sexual relationship. And if you want more than that, maybe it's okay that he, he's gone because maybe you, that's, that's never going to be what you were going to get from him. You weren't going to get the kind of relationship you wanted. So, you know, I think the way you say no is really important, Chris, right? I mean, you know, you don't want to be rude, but if you're being, if you're being considerate and thoughtful and you're just like, well, I'm just not comfortable yet, you know, I'm open to this, I'm interested in you, but I'm not comfortable yet. I think that 
most guys should probably accept that if, if they're seriously interested. And, and respect that. Yes, and, and realize that, you know, they want you to be comfortable as well. It's a big deal. I mean, I think that a lot of women are thinking, well, you know, I've got to do it. By, I, I have a blog on Facebook where, you know, I'm, that's the question. When do I have sex with a new man? And the answers range from any time you want, six dates, eight dates, to, you know, wait until marriage. I mean, there are women all over the map with this. And so I think it's really important to realize that we're all very different and who the man is probably makes a big difference as well in terms of your comfort level. But before you have sex with someone new, you really want to know him well enough to know if you have the same goals for the relationship. Do you both want something serious? Or is one or both of you looking for something casual? And so many people don't have this conversation. They feel very awkward or they're afraid to bring up commitment because they're afraid it'll scare the guy off. And if you don't feel like you can talk about it, maybe you're just not ready to have sex yet. You, pro- you want to get the answers you need so you're not sorry later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very complex. I'm just listening to you talk about all this. But let's talk about... Um, mis- common mistakes that women make that allow men to treat them badly. Well, I think I think we're talking about one of them right now. They don't say no to what they don't want, right? So if you don't want casual sex, if that's not what you're looking for, then you know don't, don't do it. <laughs> and and it's I think that there. It's okay to say, you're a great guy, I'd love to get to know you better, you know, I'm very attracted to you, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not comfortable yet. I think that's a perfectly nice thing to say. And, and, and the, other th- the other thing that's not about casual sex is it, um, these, a lot of women won't, they won't even say no to... Um, answering the phone if a guy calls late at night like they answer the phone and they don't like it and you don't even you don't have to text a man back late at night you don't have to call him well what does it look like for um, men treating women badly what does it look like yeah well i think this is part of the problem when when you agree to things you're not comfortable with then you end up in situations that you don't like. So so here's what happened to Laurel when she was dating Dan and hoped he'd bring up the subject of monogamy, but he never did. And her friend said, don't bring it up and scare him off. So Dan acted like they were a couple. And so Laurel was really shocked when she ran into him with another woman. At first she was furious because it seemed like he was cheating on her, but finally she realized, they really never had the conversation about whether or not they were exclusive before they had sex. And so she thought, well, I'm a modern woman. What's wrong with me? Why do I get so attached? But the problem isn't, and this is such a common story. I've heard it so many times. And we don't have rules about how or when to bring this subject up anymore. So all these women are confused, and couples, the men are confused too, about whether expectations exist. But when people avoid the subject, they're vulnerable to unpleasant surprises. And women today think the only protections they need are condoms and birth control pills, so they don't think about protecting their hearts. And, and then these women see the feelings of attachment they experience with sex as the problem. But our bodies are built for attachment. We just no longer are honoring the way we're built. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there's a different, um, you read about like, well, men are, um, women, oh, I don't know how to put this. Like our, our, our sometimes our goals are different or our, our, how we, I think you probably know what I'm trying to say, but. Like women want the intimacy and the closeness and the communication and the relationship, and and men come from a different. Well, what is yeah? How do you think men come from that? Because well, I think that's a, a great question. 
I think that's a great question. I think it depends on the man because so many men are very, very interested in serious relationships. So I don't think it's a blanket thing. The men are just interested in sex. But, but you know, they have all kinds of really negative cultural pressures on them as well. So, you know, they're supposed to be manly and sensitive at the same time. Now, what on earth is that going to look like? So... Should they insist on picking up the check? Even if she makes more money, can they make a move without being accused of harassment? And if they say no to sex, is somebody going to say they're gay? So they feel a lot of pressure to have sex as well. And so you have to take it on a case-by-case basis in terms of the man. So a lot of women think that's all men want, but I don't think that's true. I mean, look, there are plenty of men that get married today, and they're in serious relationships. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and you, you talked about um, the cultural pressure to, to be sexy, um, you know, and, and that contributes to these problems. And we get so much, you know, in the media, and, and, um, and so it's very hard at times to know, to come to that place of what you know what you want versus acting out of expectations. It's terrible because I mean we're we're basically swimming in this soup, and we have been for many years. Of this is what's normal, so it's very hard to break away from that. But I think, it, and that's part of my message in my book as well. Is I think we really want to be changing the way we look at this instead of thinking that we have more power when we have lots of sex. It'd be better to to think of the truth, which is we have more power when we're treated well by men. It's not about having lots of sex. And it's, and we have this focus on how we look and we have to look good to be powerful or get a man, but, but it doesn't, the way, the way you look isn't more important than your inner beauty. And so I think we need support. We need to revitalize sisterhood and have that support from other women and doing what's right for us as individuals. You know, accepting our right. looks the way we are, appreciating our inner beauty, and then we begin to expect acceptance and respect rather than all this criticism and shame. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to take another break. We'll come back and talk more about Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Thrive is what we experience when our mind, body, and soul operate as one. When we thrive, we excel on all levels. Thrive is the mindset that matters. It is essential to our being. Have you ever found yourself looking for the instruction manual on how to thrive? You'll find everything you need to help you feel strong, powerful, and peaceful in your own body. So don't waste any more time. Visit thrivebygen.com today. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404.
Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit SpiritFireRetreatCenter.com. We're back on Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and I'm talking with Dr. Susan Eldman. Um, author of Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. Um, before we start again, um, Susan, can you share your website and perhaps you know what you have to offer there for people? Yes, my website is beyourownbrandofsexy.com and I have a quiz that you can take to figure out if you're being your own brand of sexy uh, and that is one option as well as I have a um, another uh, informational uh, thing on are, are you making the seven common mistakes of dating? And I ha- also have information for parents on there. Oh yeah, and, speaking of and a, and a lot of and a lot of um, radio shows I've done that they can listen to with different topics. Yeah, well, speaking of parents, that was one of my questions. I mean, <laughs> we're dealing with teens who are, you know, there's so much peer pressure, and they're very active sexually, and yet, you know, I you hear stories of some teens is the girls just, it's just expected of them, and they don't feel they're just sort of trash. They they don't feel respected unless they maybe have a real serious boyfriend, but in general, there's a lot of just not so good stuff happening. And then you hear the stories in the news of what's happening in the sports field and and in colleges and and um. It's just it's it's hard for these young girls to deal with this. So how can parents help in this too? That's such an important question and a great question. I think that the more a mother and father can understand the these pressures that their kids are facing as a teen in our society is is really important. When there's a stigma to virginity, it it's a big deal because people can call them people call them names they say you're a prude or you know you're a tease you know if they won't have sex so the more you know about it the better it's going to be in terms of protecting your children from from the problems that they face and you don't you don't really want to push too hard but you you also don't want to be shy about sharing your opinions so if you give good reasons for your expectations and emphasize that you trust them to make good decisions uh, and that, you know, you're their ally instead of just lecturing them, I think it goes better. And I think it's important to start to talk about sex early, you know, answer their questions in an age-appropriate way because more, the more this is kind of a running dialogue, and the less it's some isolated conversation, the more comfortable you're going to feel and, and successful. Because the studies show that kids always think that parents are having fewer conversations with them about sex than the parents think. Because often it's difficult for the parents, and it's a, kind of a big deal to make it happen. But there's so many opportunities in our society because there's so much on television and everywhere else about sex. So if it comes up, that's that's a teaching opportunity. Yes, and so how do you what do you recommend for them to approach it uh, to approach well, the topic? You know, I, and, you mean if it comes up? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, because there, there is that parental thing of like, don't have sex before you're, you know, blah blah blah, or that real strict thing, or like you said, nothing is said, and so they don't have well, any boundaries. I think, I think if it's a conversation about, you know, 
did somebody at school have sex with someone and something bad happened? And then it's a conversation about what do you think? What do you think she should have done? Do you think she was facing a lot of pressure to have sex? And, you know, I think then it's more like you get to hear what your child thinks about it before you start <laughs> giving them your opinion, <laughs> right? Because maybe they agree with you, but maybe somebody was drinking too much at a party. So then you get to find out exactly where she is with the conversation before you give her a bunch of advice and rules, right? Because if she's maybe afraid it'll happen to her, then you're in a better position for her to hear you than if she thinks you're totally wrong and old-fashioned and in the in the Middle Ages, right? Uh, so yeah. you kind of have to know where your daughter's coming from to have this conversation because I think a lot of girls are unhappy with it. And, and if you can get them to tell you that, it may be actually go better than just a lecture, right? Yeah, yeah. No, who's, no, no, no teenager's going to want to listen to a lecture. <laughs> they yeah. Get out of school. So and, then it's and, more like, it's more like helpful tips to help her with where she might have a problem. You know, does she need to avoid drinking at a party, you know? And people are spiking drinks now. So, you know, you want to make sure you saw who made your drink or make it yourself or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, all those tips. Well, speaking of tips, um, let's talk about the tips and tools that, that women can use to um, to change the dynamics, you know, for, for having a more effective communications, for um, how you deal with being treated badly. So what what are the tips and tools that you offer people, women? Well, I think one of the most important things to remember is that actions speak louder than words. So I think, you know, when we live in a talk show society, we think that everybody should be, um, you know, spilling how they feel to everybody. And that doesn't always work so well with men. So sometimes it's less is more. And, and what you're showing somebody sends a bigger message. So if, you know, they're texting you things that you don't like, then don't text them back. And if you're really uncomfortable with something someone is doing, you can say, you know, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that. So you don't have to get into, you know, I had a horrible breakup with somebody before and he did that. And, you know, that's almost too much information. Some men get overwhelmed easily with a lot of emotions and information and some, and it can feel more critical to them. So sometimes it's best just to keep it really, really simple. And, but I think the first step in doing that is really identifying that you don't like it, right? And, and trying to find the courage to, to say that. Because sometimes people actually end up feeling more confident. People think, I need confidence to do that. But sometimes you find your confidence in actually standing up for yourself and having it go okay. And even if the man disappears, you know, if he was the kind of guy who doesn't really care how you feel, it's he's not going to be a good person to be in a relationship with. You, people just, women need to keep remembering that. Yeah, and what um, it reminds me of, you know, practice makes perfect. Um, not always, but 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 it to to test yourself of speaking up and seeing and and learning how to do it you're not you know when you first start things you don't do them perfectly but as you practice using your voice and speaking up you'll get more confidence in doing that that's how you build confidence yeah and if you're not comfortable saying no you could say well maybe let me think about it i'm not sure how i feel right things that that at least at least or a, a stepping stone to know. And some women just do need to think about it, right? They, they In the moment, maybe they their instincts would have them agree. So just buying yourself some time to consider all your options could be really good. Yeah, and that's trusting your instincts, you know, when you get that gut feeling. And a lot of times we don't listen to it because we don't want to, we don't want to be rejected. Um, you know, that whole, again, the people pleasing and, and then we come away going, oh, why did I do that? And then we beat ourselves yes. up. <laughs> yes. And I don't think we can emphasize it enough that women are still 
raised to be people pleasers. We thought we had kind of licked that, but in in many ways we have not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's a whole another another thing of how how do we how do we let go of that need? I mean, it comes from that wanting to be loved. You know, we all we all want that. We want to be loved, but but when it comes from a needy place, that that we're um, so we'll do anything to be loved. We're not paying attention to ourselves. Yeah, and it's and it's not necessarily love if someone's going to end up treating you badly because of it. If they don't care, you know, if they're looking at other women around you and you're not comfortable with that and you say something and they're like, well, you know, that's just who I am, then you've kind of saved yourself a lot of time because that's someone who either doesn't care how you feel or isn't willing to change at all based on your feelings. And, you know, it'd be hard to be in a long-term relationship with somebody like that because that's probably not going to be the only thing they're not going to want to compromise on. True. Well, uh, there was something I read in your book too, and and it it's something you make you may come across in your practice about women who become obsessed with the man that they date, and again, it kind of plays into that need you know needing to be loved and and um, people pleasing and afraid of being rejected. But this obsession can get really kind of scary. You know, it's true. It can be. A, it's really not good for you to be obsessed with anybody, and it's it's an important thing to address. So if it's happening, it, it, and it depends. I mean, I've I've talked to people who maybe they're not even in a relationship anymore, and the woman's still kind of obsessed with him or the woman he's with now, and why didn't he choose her and that kind of thing. So it's it's important to try and get some distance from it and to realize that, you know, it's it's a lot more complicated than just the type or who you are or whatever. Usually, you know, a relationship working out is a really complicated thing. But it's important because I think a lot of women, they may have issues um, with depression and anxiety and that may make it harder. I mean, we're all, we all get attached. We're built for attachment. So some amount of feeling, you know, sad when you lose somebody and getting over something is natural. But if it's really gone on for a long time, you want to worry, you know, are you kind of depressed? Are you kind of anxious? Or do you have some issues from growing up that may have made it even harder for you to yeah. have some kind of separation issue? Yeah. Well, we need to take another break now. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be back more with uh, Dr. Susan Edelman. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life your life intuitive and host of the radio show get into it lynn brown was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself visit intuitapparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride brand consultant jen morgan is here with radically distinct radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the RAD Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com, that's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206-972-5366. Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog, Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. 
Calling all moms. It's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit EmpoweringEnergy.com. That's Empowering with letters N-R-G.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and we're talking about Be Your Own Brand of Sexy with the author, Dr. Susan Edelman. So, um, Susan, you did mention uh, about supporting sisters, and um, I think that's a, a, well, it's very important in my work of um, empowering women and w- woman wisdom, and 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 I, I still hear stories of, and, and if you even in uh, in the workplace of the competition and the cat fights and the you know competing with each other and and I think it's there's something in our culture it's like you know whether it's part of that like capitalism or it's part of you know early ages of girls are taught to you know compete for the man for the man for the boy and um so what do you have to say about that and how we can support each other and realize we there is there doesn't need to be this competition I think we could change our culture to make it healthier for women and men, <clears throat> excuse me, so that women could begin to expect acceptance and respect rather than all this judgment and heartache because this body shaming isn't good for any of us. If they're body shaming these celebrities who gain a few pounds when they're size zero, what's it like for all the rest of us? And especially, you know, with very high rates of of women who have uh, weight, and women and men with weight problems. The research shows that you don't feel better about yourself when people are body shaming you. It's not a motivator to lose weight. It's exactly the opposite. So it would be better if your sisters would stand up for you the way the way Rihanna's fans just did when this guy body shamed her because she gained like five or ten pounds. When you can't meet the unattainable body ideals of today, your sisters know your inner beauty is more important. And when we accept and respect our sisters, we empower them and ourselves because we all begin to expect acceptance and respect. So I think these gifts that we give our sisters and ourselves of respect and acceptance can transform our world and change all this so we don't have to worry so much about being pressured to be sexy and sexual. Yeah, and yeah, being the right size, having the right hair, having the right, you know, all, all this peer pressure. And the, and the media, how do we deal with the media? And it's another question. How do, how do we, it's so in our face more than when, I grew up there, you know, we didn't have all this media and, uh, and so it's, yeah. it's, it's just totally in your face. Now you can't, you can hardly avoid unless you live out in the woods. So here's the thing about the media that's so interesting is that it's mostly male producers and directors who are making these programs, right? So men know sex sells. And maybe this is the kind of thing they'd like to see. So they pick these 
you know, women who look a certain way and they have them jumping into bed with people. And women look at this and think, well, what's wrong with me that I'm not doing it? They don't think, these are all men making this. Who are these men? This is not what I want to see. So the more of us who don't go to movies that, you know, have themes that we're not comfortable with or contact contact these people and say there's too much sex in this movie or why are all your characters stick thin you know this is not who i am i want i want to see some other things you know gina davis has a whole um organization devoted to this and there are a lot of other organizations trying to improve media images but the more they hear from you know people people out there who actually have a say i think we think that's just the way it is. There's nothing I can do about it. Instead of thinking, I'm going to let these people know I'm not going to their movie. You know, I'm not going to go, and I'm not going to, and I'm going to write them and complain. But that's not what we're doing because we think, well, that's just how it is, or we think it's cool. I mean, look at how the how popular that book, Fifty Shades of Grey, was. That whole trilogy outsold Harry Potter. That was a book about a man who had um, serious childhood trauma, and he, you know, was basically stalking and 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 doing sexually violent things to this woman. So it was a turn on for a lot of women, women, and they saw it as harmless fun. But when something like that is so popular, we have to be worried that we're perpetuating sexual violence, making it look normal and glamorous. And when you've had a presidential debate where sexual assault was highlighted on both sides of the aisle, and it's in the news every day with the Cosby trial and all the rest of it, you know, we don't want this to become our new normal. And it's women who can really change it. Oh, well, that's true. And there's, there's starting to be more women directors, and um, we just had our Seattle Film Festival, and so there were several movies I went to that were women directors. And and there's this fallacy that people think everybody wants to go see those movies that we're talking about that have, you know, um, bad images about women or they're skinny or they're, you know, all the sex or all the violence, really. Um, is that when movies are made that are are – have a great message and are, are healthy, they actually, people do go to them. <laughs> and they're refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, you know, our, our, where we put our money does make an impact and, and, and supporting, supporting women actors by going to the movies that are being made by women or there's, you know, the great, Women actors, and and I'm thinking too. You know, TV has such an impact. And think about like the uh, transgender culture or the gay culture. When you have gay people on TV that are act, you know, and and you know, and and are out in public, they are gay, or lesbian, or or um, whatever, however they identify themselves. It it becomes more acceptable because you see the humanness of them. And we're and and there are actors on TV now that are overweight. I mean, Melissa McCarthy, who has lost some weight, but she's still, you know, a heavy set person and people love her. She's funny. She's a great actor. And that makes it, you know, brings that balance. The more of that, that we see different, different shapes and sizes on TV as being normal. Yes, that would be better, wouldn't it? And I'm so glad you said that about supporting women's movies. That's very important because we do want movies that are about what are the real women's issues. You know, what are cause movies about women having trouble saying no um, or struggling with whether to say no to certain things. Yeah, yeah. That, Some real would, issues. that would be helpful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Susan, for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful to be with you. Okay, so everybody check out her book, Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, A New Sexual Revolution for Women. Um, you can go to her website, beyourownbrandofsexy.com. And uh, this is Chris Danis. I'm the founder of Woman of Wisdom Foundation. And, and actually, we have an event coming up July 8th in Seattle. We co uh, It's an event that we do with Mankind Project. It's a group of men that work on their consciousness. And it's a nice mix with Woman of Wisdom. And we, we work with the gender issues and building 
a healthy gender relationships. And in this year, we had a great topic of, you know, how do how do we work? Um, I can't remember the exact title, but how we work with love in, in this in this air, this difficult time we're in right now. And there's a lot of misogyny. There's gender trashing. There's um, oppression, gender oppression happening. And so, how can we together, men and women together? work on these issues. And that's going to be July 8th. You can read about it on our website, womanofwisdom.org. And please check out my book, Woman of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. It's about empowering women's voices and the divine feminine and from all sorts of different voices of poetry, art, and stories. And uh, you can check that out at womanofwisdom.org as well. And also it's available at Kindle now. So Okay, we're at the end of our show. We'll be back next Friday. I'll be talking to Lena Renee um, on a novel that she's written, and it's about women's empowerment in its own story. Um, And so that's going to be really fun. So everybody have a great weekend, and we'll be back next Friday. You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.